Hallelujah. Let's lift up those two hands and bless his holy name. Thank him and give him all the glory. All we give you praise. We give you praise. Thank you, Lord. Father, we give you praise. Sweet Holy Spirit, thank you for what you did in the first service. Thank you for the great and mighty word you sent our way. We know you are here again. We demand of you. Please breathe on your word. Give life to every word that will come out of my mouth. Let the word make impact in the life of your people. And at the end, we vow to return the glory to you. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name. Your amen determines your testimony. Put those hands together and please be seated in God's presence. Praise God, fortune is my portion in 2024. Congratulations. Hallelujah. Please, in case you don't hear Fongbe, you only hear English, speak English, uh, French. Si vous êtes ici, vous ne parlez pas le fond, vous ne parlez ni l'anglais, vous parlez seulement le français. Venez derrière, s'il vous plaît, des interprètes peuvent interpréter pour vous. You just go by the back there and then they will be there to interpret it to you. Merci. Merci beaucoup. Praise the Lord. The team of the monastery men, I am redeemed a wonder to my world. And we have been looking at a very critical topic which has been captioned operating in the supernatural. Please understand you are born again as a wonder. Your life is to be full of wonders. 
John chapter 3 verse 8 Jean, chapitre 3, verset 8. The Bible said the wind bloweth where it listed. Thou hearest the sound thereof. But thou cannot tell. Whither it goeth. No, whither it cometh. So is everyone born of the Spirit. So your life is to be full of miracles on a daily basis. People should look at your life and say, wow. Can you see the life of this man? Can you see the life of this man? Can you see the life of this man? I used to know him before. He used to even beg me before. Look at him. He has built house. Look at him. He has bought car. Look at him. He has opened another business. Look at her. She now has her own children. Look at her. She has gotten married. From today, one that shall be full in your life in the name of Jesus. Please understand. As born again children of God. We don't go after miracle. Miracle follow us. We are not looking for miracles. Miracles follow us as children of God. Mark chapter 16 verse 17 The Bible said And these signs Shall follow them that believe So signs and wonders Shall accompany you Wherever you enter Miracle must enter Wherever you go A miracle must happen The one with the loudest amen Is taking that miracle first in the name of Jesus. Can you help me tell your neighbor? I am not looking for miracle. Miracle is following me. It's part of my life. From today that will be your testimony. What then is a miracle. What is a miracle? A miracle is a manifestation of God in response to our faith in God in his word and in his prophet. I come again. A miracle is the manifestation of God in response to our faith. In God, in his word, and in his prophet. There can't be miracle without faith. No Our faith is not based on what we see. Our faith is based on what is written. No matter what is happening, it cannot change what God has written. Romans chapter 4 and verse 18. Romans 4, 18. He said, Abraham staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief. Verse 19. But the Bible said, and he was strong in faith, giving glory to God. Down to verse 21. Being fully persuaded that whatever God said, God is able to perform. 
His faith was not on his side. His faith was on what is written. Oh, no, did the tomato, no, the moet element, no, the eternal to hold it, you have a calome. If you must operate the supernatural, you must suspend your senses. Neither me now was not to Joe with the whole woman, with me don't have the new and who me don't to be one of the other. And believe absolutely on the wall. Me don't have the new do whole woman. The Bible said, We will come. Concerning you and me, Psalm 1 verse 3. Whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. And you are doing, you are not seeing prosperity. You can be tempted. Not, you know, you can be tempted to begin to believe that something is working against you. But that's not faith. Faith believed absolutely on the world. Oh, There is what is happening, and there is what the world is saying. Look away from what is happening and focus on what the world is saying. What is happening will soon change. Then no come to us on that to theology, but then no come to believe we don't hold it. We can't logic. No to theology, not the other. For instance. The Bible says, no evil shall befall you. No plague shall come near your dwelling. Psalm 91 verse 10. No evil. That it happened to somebody cannot cancel what the Bible says. No. The Bible says, no evil shall befall you. Believe the word. The whole army. Believe the word. The the whole army. They call you barren, but the Bible said, "Thou shalt be fruitful." Believe the word. But they know the whole army. The doctor say you are sick. Doctor, do not want to He say you will die. But the word said Jesus took your sickness. But we wake up and Jesus Christ could be out to heal. Jesus carry your disease. Jesus bear the magic bullet to Believe the word. What you believe determines what you see. What you believe determines what is happening. I decree from today. Your faith in the word will come alive. I thought I heard you say that amen loud. In the name of Jesus. How do I know that you believe the word? How do I know? Number one, you take it raw. People that believe the word don't question the word. John chapter 2, verse 5. He said, Whatever it tells you to do, do it. Take the word raw. Whatever the word of God said, the word of God mean it. Take it. Luke chapter 5, Luke chapter 6, verse 1 to 7. He said, Cast thy net to the other side. Peter said, Master, we have toiled all night long. We did not catch anything. But Peter said, Verse 4 and 5. He said, Nevertheless, at thy word, I cast down thy net. Until you take the word the way the word is, the word will never produce a result. Take it the way it is. Number two, how do I know you believe the word? By speaking it. Don't say your problem. No, whatever you say, you magnify. Whatever you speak about, keep magnifying. Instead of magnify your challenge, magnify God. I know how much you believe God by the way you talk. He said, ah, ah. Mm. Market is not working. Oh, no, 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 no. Ah. Kotono is not like before. Ah, Things are just going down. Down. 
Anyway, in our church, they say we should not be talking like that. But me, I'm telling you the truth. I know how he's doing me. There is no faith. Are we together? The Bible says you shall have whatsoever you say. If you believe it, you will speak it. You are face to face to dead. You say, I shall not die, I shall live. And God said, correct. But when you speak the word, you attract God. When you speak the negative, you attract the devil. From today, your mouth will never cause you trouble. Do you know there is somebody under the sound of my voice? After this service, things will change for you positively. In the name of Jesus. But only those who believe in miracles see miracles. You want to see miracle? Believe in miracles. They say it's not possible. Tell them that I know my God will make it possible. I believe in miracle. And tell the person, look, I'm not an ordinary person. I'm not ordinary. There is something I carry. <laughs> I declare from today, you will walk a miracle. How do I operate in the supernatural? By engaging in kingdom advancement endeavors. Engaging in kingdom advancement endeavors. If the kingdom is your focus, then miracles become the order of the day in your life. What do we mean by kingdom advancement endeavor? It means engaging in whatever moves the kingdom of God forward. Being part of advancing in his kingdom. With your time, with your energy, and with your resources. Be part of advancing his kingdom. Your time, your energy, and your resources. So let's look at those three kingdom advancement endeavors that we have. For today, number one, soul winning. Soul winning. Please understand. The Bible said, He that winneth a soul is wise. Soul winning is going out after soul inviting them to church following them up to the point of establishment going out after souls inviting them to church following them up to the point of it establishment one of my mothers here yesterday she came to my office she said i have a soul that i led to christ is a muslim was a muslim i have pushed him to do foundation class and then he has done water baptism. And today I have bought Bible. I want to go and meet him and then so that we can discuss Bible. That's so winning. It's not just sharing flyer. It's not just 
bringing somebody to church once. No. You follow up that soul to the point of establishment. Then you can say, I have won this soul. She invited him. Preach to him, led him to Christ, push him to foundation class, encourage him to do what about this? Buy Bible to give him, and read the word to coach him. That's how we need. Why must we win so? One, because we have been empowered to win soul as believer if we choose to every child of god has been empowered to win soul john 15 16 you have not chosen me i have chosen you i have ordained you that you go and bring forth fruits so you have been empowered to win soul. How can a whole you sitting in church? You have never told anybody, come to me, come with me to church. Follow me to church this Sunday. You have never. Outreach is going on, you don't come. And we are hearing testimony upon testimony from others. Praise the Lord. We are not empowered to sit down. We are empowered to go out. Luke chapter 9, verse 1 and 2. Luke 9, 1 and 2. The Bible says he called them. And then he gave them power and authority. Sir, if you want to be this, you to see the power of God engaging soul winning. Engaging in soul winning helps us to command the supernatural naturally. Verse 2. Verse 2. Luke 9 2. And they went and preached. Preach the kingdom. Verse 6. And they went and they preached. He sent them. They preached the war. And their signs and wonders began to happen. Everyone speaking to others about Jesus is on God's assignment. And you can't do God's assignment without being paid by God. From today, grace is released. That amen is not good at all. In the mighty name of Jesus. Number two, why do we win so? To demonstrate our love for God. One proof of love is obedience. To demonstrate our love for God. This week has been declared as week of sacrifice going out after soul. Everyone is to win at least one. How do you show God you love Him by obeying Him? Now we are not talking about that. Me one egg bomb, 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 bomb. How do you know John chapter twenty one from verse fifteen to seventeen. He says, Simon, do you love me? Go after my sheep. Simon, do you love me? Go after my land. If you are not going out, it's a sign that you don't love him. Number three. Why do we go after souls? To pull men out of hell. To pull men out of hell and destruction. Jude chapter 1 verse 23. It's a man is serving with fear, pulling them out of fire. One day I was in a place in Temam. And in Ghana, doing outreach. 
And I was in the center of the road. There is a road here and there is a road here. Close to a market. I was tired and standing. A man was passing. Holy Spirit said, go and speak to him. I was tired. In my mind, I finished my outreach. I said, no problem. I went and talked with him. And the man began to cry. What is the problem? He has bought a rope. He went to market to buy rope to hang himself. And I was there. And he was rescued. Every child of God is a rescue agent. There are people God has tied to your life to rescue them. I can't rescue such people. You are the one. And you have the power to do so. You know how many people go to hellfire every day? And you are there. Some are even your neighbor that die without knowing Christ. It is time to take responsibility. Let me tell your neighbor it is time to take responsibility. Tell him from next Sunday, next Sunday, from next Sunday, you should be able to come with one person. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Why do we go after souls? Number four, to give God joy or to bring joy to God. Luke 15, 7, there is joy in heaven over one soul that is saved. When you win soul, God is happy. When you buy a car, you are happy. When you marry, you are happy. When you build a house, you are happy. When they promote you, you are joyful. But when you win soul, God is joyful. And when you make God happy, God will make you happy. I decree from today, you will make God happy and your life will be full of happiness. In the name of Jesus. Number one, we say so winning. Number two, praying for the advancement of his kingdom. Praying for the advancement of his kingdom. Matthew 6 verse 9 to 11. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. God does, does not know that you are praying until he hears you praying for his kingdom. Until he hears you praying for his kingdom. Please understand. The miraculous cannot be provoked without prayer. Signs and wonders are product of prayer and the word. Pray for the kingdom. That's why we pray every Monday in the evening. That's why on our WhatsApp we have prayer from 9 o'clock to 1 a.m. every day. Verse 17 of that scripture. He said, my father that see your labor in the secret will reward you openly. Do you know even this week, God will reward somebody openly here. Open reward means a testimony that you cannot hide. A self-announcing testimony. I decree. This week. That is the kind of testimony that will locate you in the name of Jesus. In Acts chapter 3 verse 1, they went to pray. And in verse 6. Miracle. Silver and gold have I not. Such that I have, I give to you. In the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. And there was a miracle. Why? 
Anywhere there is prayer, there is miracle. And hear this? We can't win soul on the field without winning them on our knees. We first win them in our knees. Then we can win them on our knees. A wise man said, You can't talk to men about God without talking to God about them. You take them to God in prayer, and then you meet them and talk with them. This week, as we all obey that prophetic instruction, our lives shall be full of testimonies. Number three is giving to us kingdom advancement endeavor, serving God with our finances. Serving Him with our finance. There is huge demand in this last day for building the later house. Oh, as that go to twelve letter me. Zachariah chapter one verse seventeen. Zachariah and seventeen. Listen to me. Minoto. No church can ad truly advance without prosperity. Somebody say, but God know my heart. If I have the money, I will. No, you can start little by little. They collect welfare offering every third Sunday. Don't be the one enjoying the boss. Be the one giving for the boss. That's how to prosper. You see a need in church. You don't need announcement. You should take it up as an opportunity to be blessed. Printing of flyers for evangelism. All these are open doors for unusual breakthroughs in our finances. We are not doing it to help God. We are doing it for God to help us and bless us and open the heaven over our life. God is the owner of the silver and gold. So there is nothing we do that we are helping him. No matter what we give. No matter what we do, giving to the poor, giving to the needy. Something happened last week, Sunday. I was here, one of very good associate pastors uh, I had before. Very good man. He died. Oh. And the wife was crying, sending me texts. I was seated here. What is it? She needed money. They have sucked her from her house. And then she mentioned the amount, and I doubled the amount and sent it to her after service. The next day, God blessed me virtually 100 times of what I gave her from somebody in Nigeria. God, you listen to me, God is not in under pressure. There is nothing we give to God that God will not return it back in a thousand hundredfold. Back to us. There is nothing that leaves your life, your hand that leaves your life. It's an opportunity to be blessed. I remember as she was speaking, she saw the money, she, she was crying. She saw the money, she started laughing. And my sister resident pastor told me, he said, can you see how you wipe away this woman's tears? God was hearing. The next day, God told somebody, give him back. Give him back. Give and it shall be given to you. Keep and it shall be kept away from you. I prophesy over you. From today, the heavens over your life will remain perpetually open in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Today is our covenant day of exemption. Let me look at somebody by your side and say, I am exempted from evil. 
Praise the Lord. I must speak Fongbe and French by force. You must speak English by force. Pas All of us will jump. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, what is exemption? Number one is to be separated from evil and destruction. To be separated. The word said, I will spare them as a man spared his own son that served him. Malachi chapter 3, verse 17 and 18. I will spare them. Listen to me. No matter what is happening to others, God say he will spare you. He will separate you. He will separate you. People are having an accident, he will separate you. The sickness that killed them, even if it come to your body, you will be separated. That amen is not good at all. 2021, what killed people seven days, seven weeks? Could God, by the hand of the God of this commission, could not fall me down and left my life forever. Listen to me. You are not a normal person. No. No. You are not normal. What happened to the ordinary man cannot happen to you. What killed the ordinary man cannot kill you. No. No. There is a man of exemption upon your life. There is a mark of separation upon your life. The Bible said you are a chosen generation. You are a royal priesthood. You are a peculiar person. Oh, you are not ordinary. I said you are not ordinary. I decree from today evil will never come around you oh somebody is not saying that amen loud enough I went some, we went somewhere to preach we had a four days crusade there and then as we went the king of the village said the last people that came and preached here all of them died 12 of them that's in a place called Indo, you, you may not pronounce it, Indio Lumbe in Isia Langwa, Abia State. And we told him, Satan can kill other people, but he cannot kill us. We had four days crusade there. Today is over 20 years, all of us are still alive. I decree over you from today. Whatever kill other people will not be able to kill you in the name of Jesus. The herbalist that will kill you has not been born. In the mighty name of Jesus. Give Jesus a loud clap of Jesus. Hallelujah. Not this following for your exemption. Number one, God has a plan of exemption from the beginning. We saw it in the book of Genesis. How he exempted his people from famine. Genesis chapter 41 verse 17 to 23 people were selling their cattle 
Selling their body. But the children of Israel were exempted. The Bible said, and the children of Israel, verse 23, dwell in the land of Egypt. In the country of Goshen. Sorry, Genesis 47. I beg your pardon. 47, 17 to 23. Genesis 47. And they dwell in the land in the country of Goshen. Goshen And the Bible says, but wait, wait, and no. they had possession. But you they had possession. You had done nothing in that land. I decree over you. In the name of Jesus, no matter what other people suffer, you will not suffer with them. No matter what other people suffer, as they are going down, you will be going higher and higher and higher and higher. When they are going to a high level, but to do it, not for but to a guy, but not to a guy. They just in the name of Jesus. So you can just do it. They are selling house. You will buy their house. They are just going to let start. They are not hot to yes. They are selling cars. You will buy their cars. They are just going to let start. They are not hot to yes. They are closing business. You will be the one buying the business. I don't like somebody's amen this morning. In the name of Jesus. One man was harassing my in-law. He was building around my in-law. And he was harassing him. And my in-law looked at him. He's a winner. He looked at him and said to him, I will buy this your house one day. The man said, Over my dead body. Problem came. The man was looking for who to buy. Nobody could buy. He went to him. He said, That other day you said something. You said you will buy my house. My house is for sale. I decree. Those that mock you, you will buy from them. They will bring cars and houses to tell you pay anything and carry it. In the name of Jesus. So shall be. What more? We are exempted from plagues. Exempted from plagues. We saw it in the Bible. From Exodus chapter 8, chapter 9, chapter 10, chapter 11, and chapter 12. As though we do not with this also do we are exempted from plagues. Plagues of sickness. Plagues of disease. Cancer. No matter the name they call it. We have a covenant of exemption from it. The Bible said, No evil shall befall you, no plague shall come near your dwelling. Psalm 91 verse 10. Psalm 91 verse 10. Straight for your two hands. I decree. By the God of this commission. From today. No plague will come around you. No terminal disease will survive in your body. Anyone with terminal disease. I curse it today in the name of Jesus. So shall it be. Please be seated. What are the keys to our exemption? Number one, you must be born again and have the fruits of the Spirit. You must be born again. Believe you me, your salvation is not helping anybody, it's helping you. God only exempt his own children, not everybody. 
John chapter 3 verse 5 Jean 3, 5. The Bible said Verily, verily I said You must be born again You must be born again You must be born, again. You must be born of the water And of the spirit You must be born again That is your escape route That is what brings you Under the canopy of exemption if rain is falling, heavy rain, and I have umbrella, and you don't have umbrella, the two of us can be walking inside the same rain. My cloth is dry. Your cloth is wet. Why? I have an umbrella. Until you receive Christ, you don't have that umbrella. That's the umbrella. Whatever is hitting people can't hit you because you are covered. Even if there is sun, you have a shade. Because you have accepted Christ. From today, that umbrella over your life will never be destroyed. Number two. Key to exemption. Have a revelation of your exemption right in Christ. Arise and shine for your light is come. The glory of the Lord shall be seen upon you. Darkness shall cover the earth. Gross darkness the people. That's verse 3 now. But the Lord shall rise upon you. And his glory shall be seen upon your life. Listen to me, we are not the same. We live in the same country. We, 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 we buy from the same market. We move on the same road. But human beings are not the same. No! No! If you are a child of God, you are not the same with the people of the world. Today, to them there is darkness. But to you there is glory. You should have that at the back of your mind. When they are crying, you should know that it is your time to be laughing. Somebody said, but somebody died. Yes. The Bible says a thousand shall fall by your side. Ten thousand shall fall by your other side. But it shall not come near you. Have the revelation of your exemption. Number three. Carry an exemption mentality. They say there is accident on the road. You tell them that there are people that when they are in a vehicle, the vehicle can have accident. That's you. That's you. Any vehicle you enter cannot have accident. That's you. Are you hearing me now? They say they are charming, they are sending charm arrows. Tell them that there are people that arrow can't enter their body. Because the Lord is your shield and your buckler. As the mountain around about Jerusalem, even so the Lord surrounds these people, you are guarded, you are surrounded. You are covered, you are protected. You cannot die like someone that does not have God. Rise up on your feet. Oh, 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 this morning, I want to call some sincere people out. That's how the Holy Spirit put in my mind while I seated. You are not born again. All you are born again, you are living in sin. You know. 
Nobody know you like you. And God is saying today. I want to put my hand on this category of people to change their life forever. All heads bow, all eyes closed. You know you are not born again. Or you are born again, you backslid them. You know, you know. You know what you do when nobody is there. I'm not condemning you. Jesus is not condemning you. All is telling you, be sincere and ask me for forgiveness. My mercy is always available. You are in that category. Put your right hand on your chest and lift up the left hand up. I want to pray for you. Very fast. Put one on your chest and one up very fast. That's why I told you I want to call sin sincere people. I don't want people that are lying. You can't lie to God without lying. You can't lie to him at all. He knows you. Wherever you are, please come to the front with that hand. Come. Come very fast. God bless you. Very fast. Come to the altar. I'm waiting for you. God bless you. Very fast. Wherever you are, find your way to the altar. Very fast. Very fast. God bless you. God bless you. Just Keep coming. Sure, we don't know. Keep coming. One come. You are not the only one. I'm calling. I'm calling one more category before we shut down. One come, 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 one come, one come, 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 come. Come. Today is your day of salvation. Don't stand there and be saying, "Should I come out?" You need to be out. You need to be out. You know you're supposed to be here. What are you waiting there? What are you doing standing there? Come. 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 Come very fast. Very fast. Wherever you are, just come. Just come. Just come. Just come. Just come. Thank you, Jesus. Just come. Don't be tired of clapping. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Blessed be you in the name of the Lord. Now, there is this second category of people. You want to live for God, but you keep falling into sin. You hate it, but you can't stop it. You are battling in and out. All has power, please. If you are in this service, lift up your hand where you are. You are in that category. You are battling with sin. You want to live it, you can't live it. You keep falling and falling and falling. You repent, you fall. You are in that category, lift up your hand. Let me see where you are. Please, wherever you are, you are in the congregation. Join us at the front very fast. I'm dealing with only sincere people this morning. Keep coming wherever you are. You are tired of fighting it. You are tired of doing it, going back and front, in and out, backslide, come out and do it and go back again. Are you seeing sincere, sincere people? Are you seeing how people are very sincere this morning? Join us in the front very fast. God bless you. Thank you, Jesus. You are coming, join us first. The ones in front, let's pray this prayer. Put one hand on your chest and lift up one to heaven. Say with me, Lord Jesus. I come to you today. I know I'm a sinner. Say it after me. Lord Jesus. I come to you today. I know I'm a sinner. I can't help myself. Please forgive me my sins. Write my name in the book of life. Today I refuse sin. And Satan. To serve you the living God. Thank you for saving me. In Jesus mighty name. Father. I decree. From today. 
no more up and downs. I declare their sins are remitted. Their names are written in the book of life. No more backsliding. No more evil ways. No more evil friends. Any friendship that is pulling them to the wall, I break the whole of that friendship. In the name of Jesus. So shall it be. In Jesus' name.